Hey guys, Chris Brown, KZ Guy 2 with a little no nonsense know how. Got a new tow dolly, so I figure why not do a new video? In this one, I'm going to go into a lot more detail in the beginning here, a lot more comprehensive, and then I'm going to show you how to put this Mustang rear wheel drive vehicle on here safely. So let's get started. So, what vehicles can this actually tow? It's mainly designed for towing front wheel drive vehicles with a tread width minimum 40 inches however you see these ramps are actually spread out just a little bit more these are 43 and a half inches wide with a maximum tread width of 79 inches okay now can you tow a rear wheel drive vehicle yes as long as it's manual transmission and you leave it in neutral or if it's automatic transmission you're going to have to remove the drive shaft because with an automatic transmission the transmission will not be getting lubrication if you know the engine's not running and spinning can you tow an all-wheel drive vehicle? Yes, as long as you remove the rear drive shaft. Now this is Master Toast 80 THD, which is the wider of the two. The other one's 77 inches wide. And this, is rated, this one's rated for a maximum weight of 4,900 pounds. That means the vehicle going on here can weigh maximum 4,900 pounds. That doesn't mean you can throw a full-size truck on here and then tow a little Ford Ranger or Subaru and think you're gonna be safe because when the vehicle weight on here is Ex approaching or exceeding or equal to the weight of the tow vehicle bad news now this one is equipped with LED lights on the back and front for markers but if you're towing a vehicle you're gonna have to use magnetic base lights like these that you can get you know at auto parts stores or Harbor Freight and then if you don't have these you're gonna have to put the four ways on on the tow vehicle as long as it has a good battery when you're towing it's a great idea to keep a spare tire for your dolly because if you get a flat on the road with this and you're going long distance you're gonna be in trouble now for tire pressure master tow recommends running 10 psi when this thing's empty and 50 psi when it's loaded reason for that is this doesn't have any suspension so if you run 50 psi in this and it's empty you're gonna notice this thing's bouncing all over the place so if you're going any more than a few miles or so you're gonna have to drop these down now I prefer to leave them at around 35 or 40 so you got a kind of happy medium of both on this one I have the optional winch which is really great for winching vehicles on that do not run just make sure after you tied your vehicle down to unhook this because otherwise when you take turns and this deck turns this strap's going to be scraping up the bottom of the bumper and causing a lot of noise and damage now unlike a u-haul one and other tow dollies i've seen these ramps are fixed and stay right here so problem with that is your hitch is going to have to be set at a certain height if your hitch is up too high those ramps are going to drag on the ground and it's going to be bad news now versus the old buckle style ones that i had these are a little bit more complicated to use. These are the ring style, and uh, I'll, so I'll show you a little theory on these. Essentially, you have three loops here for adjusting for bigger tires and three loops here. The problem is you can get a little wound up, you know, confused when you're putting these on. But essentially, once you get that adjusted, and obviously when it's on the vehicle, you get it adjusted where you need it to be, you're gonna come on this side here, and then you're gonna, you're gonna bring this back through once, once you get the basket size where it needs to be. And, I probably would have dropped this one down a little bit more too, but essentially that's how these straps are going to work. So again, with the buckle ones, you're going to have a buckle on the side here and then you can adjust the basket size from there. But these are nice because they're actually a lot more versatile for smaller wheels and larger wheels as well. Another safety thing here, if you're back, try to not put yourself in a position where you're going to have to back this dolly up because if you do, this thing jackknifes like that. And if you have a car on it, it's even harder. It can be done, but you could damage your vehicle, you could damage the dolly, and it's, it's like I said, it's very hard to do. So you're gonna start by throwing this on. This has a two inch ball for this one, locking this down, and make sure you either have a lock or safety pin to put in here, because you don't want to rely on this little spring-loaded tab here, cheap China. A. Uh, then you're gonna go ahead and cross your chains, make sure to lock those and cross those, and then hook your four pin electrical connection up. Like I said, you have to make sure your, your hitch is set at the right height, because otherwise those ramps don't fold in and they're gonna drag. All right, now we're ready to load our vehicle on. Make sure you set the parking brake on the tow vehicle first. Go ahead down here, pop this cotter pin out. Take this pin out here and make sure to set it somewhere safe. As you can see this deck drop down now. So at this point, if you're not comfortable pulling the vehicle on yourself, make sure you have somebody up there to spot you, especially if it's an excessively wide or skinny vehicle so you don't damage your vehicle or the trailer. Set your 
parking brake, but don't forget to take it off after you've tied everything down. One thing to note here, if you put in a vehicle that has a low front bumper on it, you're going to have to put some blocks of wood under here because otherwise when you pull on you're going to catch this with the lower balance and screw some things up. Alright, so now we're going to grab, obviously I pulled this on without a spotter so I want to make sure it's on there centered. It looks pretty centered to me. So, don't forget to put your deck pin in. And once you've got your deck pin in, you're ready to tie this thing down. Now, kind of important here, if you're putting a vehicle that has very large tires on it, you might want to hook these on here first, because if you come over here, sometimes it can be pretty tight in here to hook that up. Now, you have different loops here for different sides, you know, where, where your tire is actually sitting on there. So, put it on the one that matches up best and start rigging this thing up. Now it looks like my basket size is, uh, is pretty good for this. So I'm going to pull this through here. You want to make sure you don't have this all twisted up either. And on the inside, you want to make sure you're not around any brake cables or you know uh, brake hoses or anything like that where you're going to damage things. So make sure this side's taut here. Come over here and set, set it so your ring is in the center of the tire, okay? Once you have your, your ring in the center of the tire, it's about midway on the tire, you're going to go ahead and loop this back through once. And now we're ready to ratchet this thing down. Now as far as your ratchet goes, this is the closed and locked position that you're always going to leave it in when this thing's, when you're towing this thing. This, it can't pull, so the next position is going to be you pull this down, and this is your ratcheting position. Don't just throw it up here when you go in tow because then it's going to slowly fall down and this is going to be dragging on the ground and get a whole bunch of scrapes on here and such. The third position is you pull this and that's your release position. That's when this can free spool to release. So go ahead and put it in the ratcheting position. You're going to want to line this groove up here, slide this through. You got no twists or kinks, that's good. Leave some slack here. You want to get at least two or three winds on here so it doesn't slip when you're in tow. Tighten that down nice and good. And once you get both sides down, take it for a couple turns, maybe the first mile or so, get out and definitely retighten these because they're going to loosen up. They're going to seed into the tires and loosen up and you're going to have to retighten them. One thing to note here, obviously you pull this to release, but sometimes you might have a car that has a really low bumper and you actually can't get it into the full position to release. To take care of that, you're actually going to go in here with a screwdriver and you have to stick the screwdriver in this hole back here and push down. This is your release mechanism. This mechanism right here is what will release it. So you have to push, push this plate down here. Once you get this thing tightened down, pull this down, put it in its lock position, make sure to take your excess and tie that off somewhere so it doesn't dangle in the wind. All right, now that we've got both tires securely strapped down, you're gonna go in here, release your parking brake, and since this is a manual transmission, make sure to put it in neutral. Then you're gonna take your key out of, the, out of here, and if it's equipped with a steering lock, make sure the steering's locked. Now, if you don't have a steering lock, and I recommend doing it even if you are using a steering lock, you're gonna take your seatbelt, Get plenty of slack in it, and you're going to wrap this around once and twice, and you're going to plug it in, you know, buckle it in. Because essentially the reason you're doing that is you don't want this steering box to turn. If you take a turn, this deck is equipped with, you know, it's going to turn a certain amount and then lock. If the steering's not locked and the car swings out, I've seen it happen before, this thing's going to swing all the way out, and it's potentially going to catch this fender rip the fender off and damage your door. I've seen it happen before, so don't make that mistake. Now let's talk about the most common mistakes I see happen. Uh, one would be forgetting to put the pin in the deck, people drive off the ramps, drag on the ground. Don't want to do that. Two would be people try to, they put themselves in a position where they have to back this thing up. Like I said, it can be done, but very, very difficult, if not impossible. In some cases, you might have to take the whole vehicle off. Uh, don't ever put the ve a vehicle on here when it's not hooked to the vehicle. Bad news as well, I've seen that done and, and it's trouble. Uh, I've seen people put rear wheel drive vehicles on here backwards. Can't do that either. You can do it if it's local through, you know, you're doing 10 miles an hour through a town. But if you hop on the highway with that and you're going fast, 
you have all this weight in the back of the vehicle, not to mention you might have some sloppy suspension components, and what's gonna happen, this thing's gonna go into a sway, and you're gonna lose the car, you're gonna, that little two inch ball, that thing's gonna rip off, and this car's gonna go fly. These straps, no good. Uh, one feature I failed to mention here is, these also come equipped with chains on the deck. Uh, I don't have my chains on here right now, but if you do have the chains, you're gonna take those, wrap those around the axle or control arm or something sturdy on the front end. Just leave them loose on there as an extra precaution for in case these ever, ever fail. Uh, some safety tips here. Every time you use this thing, make sure you have no fraying or, or problems on these. Make sure to ratchet to keep these lubricated. Definitely a good idea to, once in a while, take a look at your tires, check for dry rot, shake them, check the wheel bearings are nice and tight. You have a greasable Zerk here for the wheel bearings as well. And make sure your lug nuts are tight as always too. I already told you about the tire pressure, so don't forget to, you know, like I said, I usually keep this for lighter vehicles around 35 all the time, and then it's not too bad when it's empty. But if you leave it at 50 PSI and it's empty, this thing goes airborne like crazy. So if you're putting a full-size truck or something heavy on here though, you're definitely gonna have to bump this up to 50 PSI. So what exactly does happen when you try to back a car up? Let's find out. Now just to show you after only taking one turn, this thing is already loosened up. I had this plenty tight before. If your ring here approaches the, the, the if your ring here approaches the ratchet, you're gonna have to loosen this and readjust your straps to get that ring up higher. Alright guys, well hopefully you learned a thing or two there and hopefully I didn't leave too much out. If I did forget something, please feel free to comment and I'll answer that right away for you. So be safe, tow safe. And uh, until next time, this is KG Guy 2 with a no nonsense, no how. And also, don't forget to give me a like and subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks, guys.